So welcome to part two of the video. What we now need to do is to take the two, four, six, eight screws out of the bottom of the cabinet. And for those of you who don't know where the model number is, it is on the bottom. And of course it clearly says it's a 2411. So there we have it with the, the bottom off. And we'll just zoom in and let's see. Oh, well, before we do that, there's um, the turntables um, pickup is plugged in there. So that needs to come out. The internal dipole and its arrangement for the socket for the external aerial, because you've got the internal one plugs in through the bottom, if I can get that out. And of course you can plug an external one in if you're not in the peak reception area. And that unplugs there. We've got power here to the record turntable. If we can just get oh that out and we've got the loudspeakers left hand channel and right hand channel on that connector there so it's all on connectors which makes it so much easier and hopefully we'll be able to just lift that chassis out okay I could really have taken the card off that when it was in the uh, unit took the three screws out well, cleaning these controls, whether it needs it or not, we might as well do that right here and now. They're an open construction, so it's easy to, I use service, I'll uh, switch cleaner on these. And what we need to do is to get that in. Then we'll work that around. when I put the knobs back on, which if you remember I had in the dishwasher. Now, let's see if I can just zoom in on these. I don't think I need to. Inside here we've got some capacitors which are black and they're a particular unreliable type. Now we haven't plugged in this product and we're not going to because if these are faulty, uh, especially in the main amplifier part, it can cause damage. So we're going to be changing one, two, three, four, five, six for starters. I think we'll probably do that one for good measure, the orange one. And then on the amplifier itself, uh, I don't like the orange ones and we'll change those three as well. At the end of the day, these are uh, 1971, something like that, aren't they? It's now 2017 and it's time they were changed. I don't have much problem with the mains filter capacitor there, the big blue one. Uh, not main filter. What am I talking about? The main smoothing capacitor. It was the main. It was the. That's the filter capacitor. Uh, I'm losing the plot. So we're going to go into the workbench and we're going to change those capacitors. Here we are on the workbench with the amplifier chassis. As you can see, those of you who follow the videos, that bench light's just showing. Well, may realise it's a different picture. The reason it's a slightly different picture, I've had to use a different camera, which has been a bit of a faff. My part-time uh, um, friend, uh, Mr Chippy, who uh, helps here, decided he wanted to borrow the normal camera to lend to his lady friend. Um, so we have had an interesting thing, because we normally use a high-band camera, this is a high band camera, but because it has an AVR connector on it, we only have an AVR connector in low band. So we've got a high band camera through a low band cable into a high band mixer and recorder. Goodness knows what it's going to look like, but that's all we can do. So, we now need to strip this down. Um, and as I was saying earlier, we need to get rid of these capacitors. I'm going to get rid of that orange one, those two black ones, those two black ones, those two black ones. Uh, that'll do on the preamp board and then on this board we're going to get rid of the or two orange ones there and there and the one two three electrolytics there I know it's a faff it's got to be stripped down and that's what's got to happen next right well, as you can see we've stripped this down and although you can get to the back of that board through some holes uh, I've taken the board out and 
using the circuit diagrams which I have uploaded to Scribe and the layout chart on the preamp and you might want to take some notes of this I'll just zoom in the camera especially if I get it the right way around on the preamplifier we're changing capacitor 112 which is 2 microfarads so we replace 2 with 2.2 these days the, the numbering has changed as you'll be aware the, what we call the preferred values capacitor 74 2 microfarads capacitor 79 and 80 at each 8 microfarads we replace those with 10 capacitor 86 and 87 2 microfarads each so again we replace them with 2.2 and capacitor 115 is 300 microfarads and we'll be replacing that with 470 some of you may be able to get 330 but we can't so 470 is the nearest you always go slightly higher on the regulator board which is shown just there on the layout and in reality if we just zoom out wrong way is the board here next to the mains transformer there's one on there and that's a hundred microfarads so that's the voltage regulator board so that needs to go on the radio chassis we've just unsoldered the um, aerial input connector just so I can swizzle the board around and that capacitor there is the only one we need to change and it's eight microfarads so we'll be replacing that with ten on the amplifier board If I can actually wiggle it round, um, we've got capacitor 104 at 50 microfarads. We replace it with 47. Capacitor 101 and 102, each 300 microfarads, and we're, again we're replacing those with 470. Capacitor 111 is also 300 microfarads, so we're replacing that with 470. And capacitor 103 is 50 microfarads, so we replace it with 47. And then there's two on their own. Can you just see those there? There's those two on the chassis. They're 750 microfarads. Again, they are available in some regions, but not. I can't get them uh, here, so we'll be putting 1,000 in in that application. And you vote when you look at the ones you're taking out. You'll be looking at the voltage on them, and of course, the newer parts will be a higher voltage. Um, I can't give you any for examples yet, but I'm going to start taking these out and we'll be making sure that we replace them with a higher voltage. So I'll get back to you when I've had the soldering iron out. Right, so that's changed all the capacitors and the voltage rating, now I had, I've been able to take them out on the preamp board there, the uh, two microfarad ones were 25 volts and the eight microfarads were just six volts, the 300 microfarad ones uh, were, was 25 volts. So, of course, we've uprated all those because of the modern values, etc., etc. Regulator was 100 microfarads at 40 volts. The, on the radio tuner, there's, there was one to do, and it was 8 microfarads at 6 volts. On the amplifier board, which is uh, still dangling around, the 330 microfarad ones we've upgraded to 470 because of the way the preferred values are at 35 volts, they were 25 volts. The 50 microfarads were 25 volts and we put 35 volts in. The 750s, which were these two uh, in P-clips here, they have been replaced with 1000. They were 18 volt rated, they're now 35 volt rated. So with that, we'll screw this back together. So we've just got a few screws to put in there. Right, we're on the next day. Uh, when I powered this up in the workshop, I had only got the right hand channel work. Sorry, I only got the left hand channel working. And what I found is when I put an in input on the um, volume control, I could have used a signal injector, but I just touched it uh, on the volume control. I got a buzz on the left hand channel, I got a buzz on the right hand channel. And so the fault finding, looking at the circuit diagram, 
revealed there was a preamplifier transistor on each channel after the balance control but I'd got nothing on the right hand channel's input side of the volume control so I thought well it's not getting there so I suspected the transistor VT13 as uh, not being quite right and VT13 is there, we'll just zoom in I think the BC154's so it's not like the early models where you've got problems with germanium transistors, they're silicon so that's uh, the right hand channel VT13 that's the left hand channel VT14 compared voltages, that wasn't right, whipped it out, put it on the transistor tester and the transistor said this is a diode, so I thought right, time to change it so I've changed it and hopefully when I switch on now and that's the right hand channel you're listening to bit of a scratchy radio we've just got the test prods if I just swap over to the other channel so now you're listening to the left hand channel So whilst we were at it, I didn't even bother change, ch checking the lamp, I've changed the lamp, it's 24 volts on this. So the jobs are good and, and it's time to put it back in the cabinet. Now I'm just going to pause the video and I'll show you the front panel which has been through the company dishwasher. So there we are with the front panel. The I took the perspex away from the aluminium extrusion. To do that you have to remove the stereo transmission light which of course on the 2011, uh, 2411 this model is not connected to anything because it hasn't got the stereo decoder but they did fit that in case you opted for the decoder at the time and there's simply a spring washer, it's a bit of a swine to knock that out without breaking anything. That splits it and uh, jobs are good and as I say so we'll get that put back together and the next video we'll have it in the cabinet and we'll see if that record turntable actually turns and whether the cartridge works <laughs>